Oh, hi, Ogala Master. So today we are going to uh, Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So today we're going to continue where we stopped the other week, last week. Um, I think I've already started uh, describing to you the importance of human resource management in operations, a human resource, job design, as well as uh, job uh, work measurement. Okay. And uh, we did go through this, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, NASCAR racing team or Formula One racing team in which you need to have competent skill and, you know, high performance team in order to, com you know, compete uh, in this race. So you can, we can also um, think about organizations having a strategy to compete in business. Okay, so you have to compete in business. So you need to manage your labor and uh, effectively. So you need to do, you know, labor effectively, efficiently. And you, I mentioned that you need to design jobs. You need to design work. Okay. And, uh, you know, human resource strategy will ensure people are effectively utilized because we must make sure that you know, we are paying for salary of workers. When you work in organizations, it is, uh, it's not free, right? Organizations have to pay for the salary. So is the company or the organization effectively utilizing the people? As well as, you know, I mentioned about uh, within the constraints, having a reasonable quality of work life, and I, I think we stop here. We stop in the sense that we try to, as far as possible, um, have good human resource strategy within our constraints. Okay, within our constraints. It's a product strategy, different products have different skills, materials, you know, the, the location, uh, the schedules, time of the year, and so on. Okay, all this uh, process strategy, individual strength, layout. Okay, right. So, so we need to have uh, you know good human resource strategy, and it's uh, when you talk about human resource, there is um, what you call as labor planning. We have to plan for our labor, especially for uh, production, or even for that matter. In you know, you talk about farming, right? Farming. There are seasons in which you have to plant the seeds. There are seasons when there is low work, high work, even project management as well. So we need to have some labor planning. How many people do you need to have during the, you know, the, the whole horizon, the time horizon? So if you have uh, employment stability policies, you try to match your direct labor uh, the number of people that you have, you follow exactly demand. That means if demand increase, you will actually increase the number of employees or the number of people working. So that will actually make sure, ensure that you'll be able to produce, will be able to deliver according to your uh, demand or according to orders. Okay. So in this strategy, strategy of employment stability, that means you do not, you do not fire anyone. Even during low, low production, you keep the employees. Of course, it's costly to the organization, low production. You have to still to pay for the salary, correct? So, so this, this, uh, this, you match uh, direct labor cost to production. And of course, this will incur cost in hiring, termination, and so on. And for this case, labor is treated as variable cost, meaning that the, um, uh, the, the number of products that you produce will be costed per, you know, uh, labor is per, you know, per product that you actually produce. 
okay and of course the the, the greater the number of products the cheaper your the uh, the cost is going to be eh? okay so because you are utilizing the labor much effectively okay so in this case labor is variable eh? variable cost now or you can also have the strategy of holding employment constant that means you you're going to actually uh, uh, okay sorry the other one the first one is actually you you vary your labor okay you vary your labor that means if it is high more numbers you increase reduce you, uh, you reduce the number of employees so this is you know uh, following demand i mentioned just now was actually whole employment constant for example throughout the year you have 5000 workers so you keep that 5000 workers so you don't lay off okay you minimize lay off you minimize firing but of course this is uh, employees may be underutilized during slack periods during time in which production is low or there is uh, less work in this case labor is treated as fixed cost why why is it fixed cost anyone as you have to pay you have to pay for the labor but you don't have production at that time that's why it's like a, a fixed yeah. because if there is a labor you must have to pay for them exactly however there is whatever quantity that you are able to produce <clears throat> you, you have to pay for the labor you have to pay for the labor okay it's a fixed it's that's why it's fixed cost yes that's why it's a fixed cost as opposed to previously if the quantity is um, it depends on the quantity that you produce okay it's variable cost okay the higher the quantity the lower the the uh, what do you call the cost eh? yes of course for for this uh, following the demand okay <clears throat> the next thing that we always talk about uh, labor employment is uh, work schedules because in order to meet our um, uh, demand or to fulfill our promise to you know people that we are going to deliver the service or the job we have to have work schedules okay and uh, you can have a standard work schedule five days eight hours or there are organization which use flexi time which is uh, allowing employees within limits to determine their own schedules um, so these are work schedules flexible work week fewer but longer days there are part time okay fewer uh, people possibly uh, irregular hours what about today when you talk about covid what is happening to our work schedule anyone what is happening to our work schedule uh, today so, so so we have a work from home we have work from home meaning we we are, we are working do you clock in at it how do you know that you clock in at it if it's a 8 to 5 job how do you make sure that employee actually start working at it and in the home environment you know with mothers with children it was we actually you know have uh, some kind of disruption definitely there is no way that you you in a work in a home that you actually fulfill the you know the the physical environment of of uh, you know office work <laughs> so so this pandemic is actually a little bit disrupting you know work schedules actually or even to the extra extent uh, i've heard of people who actually have to work until night because uh, we, we can have uh, we can have zoom meetings anytime <laughs> Zoom meetings can be held at 8 a.m. or 10, 8, 10 p.m. So work schedules are very, very. Some, some kind of study should be done to see what is actually happening today in terms of work schedules. There is no 
physical, you need, don't have to be physically uh, attending to your office. Uh, so, and <clears throat> you can think about uh, efficiency, effectiveness, uh, effectiveness, efficiency, and so on. But anyway, so these are issues that must be think about when you talk about when you want to manage organization uh, towards uh, excellence in operations. Okay. Uh, another aspect of uh, human resource is actually we need to have some kind of job classification and work roles. So this is very, very surface. I'm not going, you can go to a human resource management subject and go and study in more detail. Okay, probably some of you have really taken HR, human resource. Have you taken Yakob HR subject before? Yes, yes. So, so these are just, you know, uh, so in job classification, you must specify who can do what. Specify when they can do it, and then you know what conditions. So it's basically uh, uh, defining and also uh, having job, you know, job description. For example, okay, what does the job entails? If you are the supervisor, to what extent is your authority and responsibility? It must be clearly spelled out. Then only you know things can be uh, effectively uh, run and monitored and accountable. Who should be accountable? I always believe in accountability. You must account, uh, you must give uh, accountability to those uh, responsible. Then, uh, you know, there are unions, okay? Do you know unions? Company have uh, society, it's not, it's not society, it's uh, it's a union. Makarimaska, only union. Union is uh, workers' union and ask for, you know, contracts, work uh, bargaining. Uh, they bargain about salary, their work conditions, and so on. Okay. So this is often the result of union contracts. Sorry, working. Toyota, Toyota union. Toyota internal union, yes, Toyota has internal union. But some countries, they have, uh, do you have a labor union in Bangladesh? Uh, yes, yes, yes. National, eh? at national level. Uh, so they will actually <coughs> determine their rights eh? for fairness in, uh, in, in all aspects of employment. Eh? Because, um, we don't want like they're working our their salaries, their fringe benefits, and everything. Yes, yes. So they they will actually negotiate for better salaries, uh, bonuses, so that you have fair treatment between management yeah. and. They're working for their welfare, actually. Yes, yes. Their it's very welfare. important to take care of welfare of the workers. Okay. Um, also, some, but, but the problem is sometimes you restrict flexibility in assignments and consequently efficiency of production. I remember, uh, you know, Japanese manufacturing companies, they actually have uh, very flexible assignments in terms of, for example, production worker must also do some maintenance, simple maintenance work. But in an American manufacturing company, all maintenance will be assigned to maintenance people. So production is just do the production. They, they don't, they are not, uh, they don't care about, you know, the, the equipment or the tools, uh, whether it is functioning well or not. They just ask maintenance to do it. But in Japanese organization, for example, simple tools like grinders, or even uh, welding devices. These are be maintained. The simple maintenance is given to the production. They develop this Toyota Total Productive Maintenance, TPM. So Total Productive Maintenance is uh, given you know, some part of simple maintenance, uh, oiling, simple checking is given to the production. So, so this is uh, you know, different 
different uh, acceptance by different culture actually okay different culture will have some different acceptance okay so we need to have a clear working rules uh, job classification in order to ensure that the uh, you know the work is being done properly and it can, it should be done it must be clearly you know my experience when i went to but i'm not trying to make a country uh, not trying to belittle a country you know belittle making fun when i was in sudan humiliate not humiliate like, like humiliate like like in sudan you know the companies have uh, no schedule working hours for example start at 9 or finish they don't they are very they lack this uh, discipline of time scheduling uh, so you know that's that will affect the efficiency or even work rules you know the, the workers some not all companies uh, some companies in sudan uh, good companies are there also but the, those who are not performing you know come to work read newspaper have you seen that i mean in bangladesh also in malaysia also you know they come to work and they start reading the newspaper you know yes yes that only they start working so that is not the culture in in many japanese organization japanese organization 750 they already have taiso taiso ka taiso ka morning exercise taiso wakarimasu ka taiso 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 ka taiso ano eh exercise morning exercise 750 they they supposed to start at 8 but i have to come to work at 750 10 minutes early for exercise morning exercise morning you know relax then it will start work so it's not that you come at eight you start work no it come 10 minutes if you don't come 10 minutes earlier you're late late is defined as 7:50 not 8 o'clock <laughs> so you try to implement that in a society in which they don't accept this it's quite difficult so anyway so this is this is culture this is uh, you know uh, work rules and and i believe in you know discipline in order to achieve uh you know, success so the next thing is uh, i mentioned many times uh, that you can design, you must design job design means you think about the job you have to specify okay so job design is basically specifying the tasks that constitute a job for an individual or a group so this will cover job specialization job expansion is division of work for example if your company is exporting to malaysia and um so what, what kind of uh, sales department that you probably want to have what kind of people do you want to have you understand for example china producing uh, gloves you no know gloves rubber gloves so you want to export to malaysia you have a sales and marketing department so how are you going to distribute the work what kind of positions are you going to open so of course this will result into organizational structure so what kind of positions what kind of you know jobs that probably you want to have ah uh, yakob yeah there is like marketing and sales yeah probably a marketing officer yes. and you probably have uh, you know this person who going to take care of exports and imports this person will yes. take care of uh, you know dealing with uh, tax taxes you know tax related or customs related yeah like that is called in our country commercial officer those who supervise the export import and also taxes 
Yeah, including Com so, so you have a commercial officer. O officer, yeah. Yeah, he will actually be responsible to make sure that the, the goods will be able to pass through customs, you know, sales, right. tax, and then the, the payment system, you know, how are going to, you know, uh, remit the payment through which, you know, do we have, uh, what do you call that? The letter of um, LOC. Letter of credit, or, like LC, LC. Yeah, okay. So all these things are, credit. Uh, so the person must be conversant with the rule of the country of the exporting. For example, he must know Malaysian custom regulations. He must right. know uh, Malaysian banking system. System. Correct. Uh, so, so, same thing as in production. I'm trying to give example in your area so that you know you can reflect also. But in production, it's very clear. For example, you make a car, you have to have people who are engineers in the body, body assembling. You have to have engineers in the engine assembling. You have to have engineers in the painting shop, painting. So, and painting workers, painting, there are many. So, so you talk about job specialization, job expansion, uh, psychological components. This is a very old concept whereby it was invented or first suggested by Adam Smith. I think many people will probably know Adam Smith who wrote the book, The Wealth of Nations. The Wealth of yes. Nations. And he suggested that can do increased productivity by dividing the labor okay, into unique tasks. So that if one were able to do that unique task, it's much more efficient. For example, you can assemble a car car by car, take all the parts, assemble it. If it is already painted, okay, a painted body car. But the system that has been created by, you know, because of this labor specialization, just one worker is responsible to assemble the tire. Just fix the tire. From eight to five, he fixed the tire. That is job specialization, correct? So, so it's actually, uh, it will involve uh, the development of dexterity. Dexterity means your ability to manipulate your psychomotor skills. Eh? Less loss of time, okay, development of special ed. These are because you need to have this in order to be able to have job uh, specialization. Okay. Um, and the wages must fit the required skill. So this is basically job specialization. But of course, if you spend your number of years working in one particular area, what will happen after a few years? What will happen? You become bored. You become boring. Am I right? If you just fix the tire for 10 years. So that's why we have job expansion. A worker will not be efficient or, you know, will become demotivated as he, the, you know, he only has to do this and he is, is going to be boring. So in order to reduce boredom, you, you do this. You enlarge the job. You have job enlargement. You have job rotation. You have job enrichment. And, you know, at the end, you have empowerment. Okay, so what we do is actually we add more varieties to jobs. Job enrichment, okay, so basically it is like this. If your current work is just to do a simple manual insertion of this component, so the enlargement means you are given different tasks. So you add in more tasks. So that instead of having one skills, now you have three skills. One, two, three. So Horizontal expansion is called enlargement. Horizontal, meaning you add another job and another job. But if you have vertical enlargement, it is called enrichment. You enrich, meaning that, for example, you are not only involved in production, this is production, 
you are also involved in testing. You test the circuits. In order to test the circuit, you must have knowledge about testing, about function. It's just not, you know, fix it. And also, for example, uh, planning. Eh, plan. uh, you, buy, you can enrich the job by uh, participating in cross-function quality improvement teams. Eh? So you need to enlarge jobs. You need to make sure that the job is continuously interesting. Okay. Any example in, uh, you know, like uh, accounting work? Any example? For example, if you have experience in accounting or other jobs that you can think of. Any other examples? Nian, can you think of other examples? In large, a job in large. About? About this enlarge, enlargement. Okay. How do you enlarge a job in a, a supermarket? Or, you know... Uh, uh, yes, I, I can... Um, maybe it not just uh, do some uh, counting. And I can also play the goods. Account, um, counting the goods? No. Count, uh, what, what, what do you mean? For example, uh, the new goods uh, come and I can play the goods uh, on, on the shelf. Or put on the shelf, new different mm, goods. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, anything else? Or other places? I, I, you can see, if you go to supermarket or you go to 7-Eleven, for example, 7-Eleven. In convenience store in Japan, the cashier handles not only the selling of the the, uh, the, the, the food, food in the 7-Eleven, but he is responsible also, he must know how to process bills. Correct. You can pay bills in. Uh, and this, and uh, you can, yeah, he 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 also should know um, how to make it. Yes. Make it. So, um, so that is job. Uh, what do you call uh, enlargement? If a cashier is only just, you know, this is uh, water. Okay. Tit, tit, tit. That is one single. Skill. But now, I'm going to, you need to pay for your electric bill, your water bill, your telephone bill. So he need to have, you know, knowledge of the system about the water system, the bill, the electricity. Because different providers will have different uh, system of payment. So that is enlargement of the facilities. Of course, you get new you know, other things that it's multitasking. By giving more responsibilities or more duties. More uh, multitasking. It's actually multitasking. Multitasking. Right. multitasking. Yes. Okay. Um, right. Okay. That when you all, when you look at job, job design, you all must uh, consider these psychological components. <coughs> okay. Because jobs must be uh, psychologically motivating. Okay, there are many components of uh, you know psychology. Have you you know psychology, right? Human behavior and you know human reaction towards the reaction thinking. Yes. Okay, so you must consider psychological components of job design. There is a famous study which is called Houghton Studies. Okay, Houghton studies, uh, they studied, uh, there's a group of industrial engineers. They tried to see and compare whether the 
light levels in the production line will affect productivity or not. Okay. So they try to change the level of lighting. For example, this area, they put it very bright. This, another area, they put it a very dim, low light, dark. But they found that, but discovered that productivity was independent from lighting levels. You understand? The lighting has no effect on productivity. That means how much they're able to produce. Whether you increase the light, whether you reduce the light lighting, it doesn't affect the output. Output for group A, up group for group B, same. So they were <laughs> So they think that. So so that it is not actually, you know, the outside physical environment that is changing. So it's actually, they call it the workplace social system. Okay, the workplace social system. If the social system has set a standard in which everybody achieve this, they will actually do together, they achieve it. Okay, so the workplace system and uh, distinct roles by individuals may be more important than physical factors. Okay, distinct roles of individuals may be more important than physical factors. That means, uh, this, is, was, this was the birth of OB actually, eh? organizational behavior. If you study OB, organizational behavior, you must know this Houghton studies. Okay, have you heard Houghton studies? Yes, yes. Uh, Nian, no? Uh, all of you have heard it, okay. So individual difference may be dominant in job expectation and contribution. So this is the so-called psychological components of job design. So when you look at all jobs, look at this. So jobs should include the following characteristics. Number one, you ask the skill variety. How many skills does this job require? Is it only one? Just, you know, uh, have you seen a toll ticket, a toll booth highway? Malaysia, we have many tolls. Right. Uh, previously, there is a uh, toll operator, he, she will sit there and give the ticket. Have you seen? Have you ever yes. seen a toll operator in the booth, toll booth, give the ticket? A car come, give the ticket. What skill does it have? <coughs> what is the skill possessed by the operator whenever a car comes, push the button, ticket come out, and hand it over to the driver? What is the skill that is required for the worker? For the skill? Ah, skill. Is there any skill required? There isn't any skill. There isn't any skill. skill. Like, there isn't any skill. Yeah, only <laughs> like pushing the button and right. get the so, ticket. So this is actually a low value added job, no skill. So it's just wasting money. So you can just put a machine and just ask the driver to push it and take it. You don't need a man or a woman to stay there. And that is, you know, just one skill. Uh, okay, I'll ask you a question. How many skills do you think that a lecturer needs to teach a subject? Just tell me, just, you know. What are the skills required to, to become a lecturer? Or to become a teacher for that matter? So, when you are, what can you ask, Sit Simon? What first, a lecturer need to uh, have to have the deeper knowledge on the like specialization on any subject, okay, and so that and also he has to like okay, power of 
hypnotizing to the student and like uh, make understand to the other people clearly okay explanation and also yeah deep knowledge is here uh -huh. must be subjective knowledge explanation uh, yes application application okay yeah application of the knowledge okay i see See, no, the lecturer. So what's the most, <laughs> what's the most important skill of a lecturer? <coughs> eh? Talking. Ah, uh, she help graduates. Oh. Uh, talking, talking. If you cannot talk, you cannot become a lecturer. Talked, yes, talked okay. with, and gaily with a gaily art and literature. Uh, the the most important skill is uh, so. My most important. Lecturer's most important asset is his his voice, his throat. His lecture. I should, I his should lecture. In, this should go for insurance. You know, my my mouth, my throat must go for insurance. Maybe two million, three million insurance. All right. Because if I cannot, uh, I can use you know a uh, number one skill, very important because. Very important. And other things, of course, when you want to explain, you need to have good knowledge, articulation, explanation, examples, you know. Of course, this comes... They, they also have they to have uh, to tolerance. Tolerance? Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you yeah. know the meaning? No, no, I don't know the meaning. The, what okay. is that? With, um... So think about it. Your job, for example, as accountant. What are the skills? These are to tolerance. Okay, toleration. Okay. Tolerance. Tolerate. Yeah, to tolerate. Yeah. 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 But but skills, for example, skills of. Uh, I I will tell you that tolerance was here. I think patience. Um, uh, Patience. Not not a not a, a skill. <laughs> no skill. Yeah. Skill. Okay. I I've asked another question. What are the technical skills that a lecturer, you know, a presenter should know in COVID time? <laughs> no. <laughs> like skill of using new platforms. You know. All right. So this is speaking, like speaking skill. Speaking skills, exactly. Speaking skills and also technical skills of, you know, when I started teaching, it's a blackboard, whiteboard. Chalk Ready. and board. Chalk. Chalk. Then we move to the uh, so called whiteboard using. Whiteboard, yes. Using, Digital uh, board, basically. Using marker. Not, not yet, wow. not yet, digital. Ashik Yaakob, whiteboard. Then oh, we move to yeah. plastic transparency. You know transparency? Right on the plastic. You haven't seen that. So there are hmm. so many stages. And then PowerPoints. Then we move to PowerPoints. PowerPoint is not started when I started teaching. No, no PowerPoints. Yeah, of course. I know. Oh, blackboard. <laughs> okay. Mm. So I need to know how to explain using a blackboard. Okay, these are teaching aids. Blackboard and chalk. Yeah, chalk and board. So teaching aid skills, use how to use, uh, you know, uh, online platform. All this, you need to, LMS, learning management system. I'm still new on that. Anyway, so this is the variety that adds uh, interest, interesting, become very interesting when you pick up new, you know, new skills, new skills as we go along, okay? And... Uh, job identity, do, do you identify to the job? How do you identify to the job? For example, you know, you produce a car. When I produce uh, you know, a car, I say, oh, that's my... I can identify to that product because I'm part of it. I can identify to all of you when you graduate because I can identify because I was part of the teachers who actually gave you some knowledge. Understand? So that's, you know, the products that we produce, eh? things that you are involved. 
For example, you say, okay, the Bangladesh, I was involved in the telecom tower. That is my project. I was, uh, you know, you, you can identify. And how significant is the job? Job significance. For example, if you are in the army, if you are in the police, if you are in the, you know, uh, enforcement, provided you don't do nasty things, okay? Provided you are fair. How significant is the job? Okay. So are you, you know, one of the most significant job is trying to give knowledge to someone who has no knowledge. You know, the most significant job of teacher teaching is teaching the standard one or year one who doesn't know how to read and write. The most significant, you remember when you started learning, what do you know? You know nothing. Who teach you to read and write? Or probably your father and your mother. How significant? Job significant. Okay? And then autonomy. Autonomy means you have complete freedom of what you're going to design and deliver. That's what I like about, you know, teaching and university. University, I am autonomous. I can teach, but of course within the boundaries. I'm not going to teach you, you know, uh, uh, become a crook. <laughs> no, noble things. Things which are going to be helpful for your career. Okay, so autonomy. I, I can design, I can teach you this, I can teach you that, I can, you know, that, that's, that's wonderful. And also feedback. Feedback, you know, you can get feedback from the students, from the organization. You get feedback from your bosses. Do you want good feedback from your bosses or bad feedback from your bosses? Good. Good feedback. feedback. If you get good feedback, do you do it? Do, do you try to do better in the future? Yes. Yes. So that's why it's important when you become bosses, you give feedback to your, uh, what do you call, employees or your subordinates. Your subordinates that you take care. You give feedback. Even bad feedback also. You know, if you want to reprimand or even uh, scold, no problem. Have you scolded your uh, subordinate before, Yakub? Huh? No. I have. I have to admit to you because when I become a boss, when I become, you know, a head of a department, I have to get things done. If I don't take this thing done, you know, employees, uh, some are good. Most are good. Most are good. Some are not good. So this is you need to have good continuous feedback. And they, they know that as a boss, you mean business. You mean business. You don't mean, you know, but not in classes. Classes is okay. You know, I teach and, you know, I treat you well. <laughs> okay. All right. Any questions uh, so far? What, what time is it now? It's uh, okay. I'll try to stop with another five minutes or so for you to take some break. Eh? So we have these self-directed teams. That means if it is empowered, basically uh, you will reach a level in which uh, the team is doing job together. Okay, a group of empowered individuals working towards a common goal. That means you have a department which actually have, you know, a common goal. If, for example, the department is quality department, then the team will move towards trying to achieve high quality products and services by the company. Maintain ISO 9000 standard, for example. Maintain all the spe uh, specifications. Yeah? So meet customer requirements and so on. Um, okay, can organize for long or, long or short term objectives. And self-directed teams are effective because it is providing empowerment. Empowerment means you don't have to get the bosses or the managers to actually push you to do work. Push. In developing countries, we have to push people to do work. But in developed countries, uh, you know, in good companies, not, not developed, in excellent organization, empowerment. Empowerment means they know what to do, they'll follow through and complete the task eh, effectively. And ensuring uh, core job characteristics 
for example, just now skill variety, significance, um, and it meets the individual psychological needs. Eh? I know it's quite easy, easy said than done. I'm not trying to say that it is very, very smooth because in companies, it's very difficult because we'll have some resistance. Many you know, employees will have, uh, you have difficulty, okay? Um, okay, to maximize uh, effectiveness, managers should ensure those who have legitimate contributions on the team. I mean, you, have, you must have team players, and you must provide management support, training, and you have clear objectives and goals, as well as providing the financial and non-financial rewards. I think, you know, companies must provide rewards. Rewards in the sense that uh, not only monetary, rewards can be you know, a thank you letter note, thank you for your effort, or have a, a joint, uh, have a, a dinner together or lunch together. Eh? That's part of you know, the motivating factor. Um, and uh, supervisors release control means they do not, you know, um, breathe on your neck every day trying to ask you what you have done, what you have done. <laughs> okay. So you have you know, really some control. So this is what we call as the job design continuum. That means, you know, from specialization, just now we talked about specialization, but it's not motivating. There will be some board, boredom. So you go into enlargement, enrichment, empowerment, and finally self-directed teams. So of course, you know, the self-directed teams uh, will be, the most uh, ideal, the most ideal for organization, okay? But not organization have these uh, self-directed teams trying to achieve their uh, objectives. Okay, and uh, if you design jobs properly and you have uh, uh, job enrichment, job expansion, so basically these are going to uh, theoretically, at least theoretically, you know, it will improve the quality of work life, improve uh, job satisfaction, increase motivation, allows employees to accept more responsibility. But obviously, more responsibility will have to commensurate with higher wages. You cannot just give more and more and more responsibility and expect the person to just, it's okay, I'll just accept more jobs. Do you want to accept more jobs, Yakub, with no extra benefits? Obviously, no, not, not, not all, not everyone. Eh? Some may want to, but give some form of recognition for new responsibilities, added responsibilities. And obviously, you will improve productivity and quality. Productivity, uh, you know, always remember, eh? productivity is the measure of output over input. Eh? And uh, reduce turnover and absenteeism. Basically, if the organization, company can think about uh, having people who has, you know, a motivation, high motivation, uh, drive, drive to work, uh, not drive car, drive, internal drive, uh, will reduce turnover. Turnover means people who quit the job, okay? You go to a company, if many people want to quit the job, you know, stop working. That is, uh, you know, not so good company. And also, high absenteeism. So when you are a consultant, or if you want to uh, study a company, whether the level of motivation is high, one of the indicator is absenteeism. If you measure the absenteeism and you look at the records, attendance records. Maybe you can see it is an indicator. It is a signal, a signal that the company is having some problems. Okay. Because people don't want to come to work. <laughs> they go for medical leave, they go for, you know, uh, absent and so on. Okay. I'm not going to explain this. Um, 
Right. Okay, let, let, let us stop here for a while. Uh, I'm going to give you... Okay, uh, I'm not going to bother with that. So when you talk about uh, job, okay, can you hear me? It's okay. So you have to think about motivation and incentive systems that uh, you provide to the uh, employees. So it can be in the form of bonuses, uh, which is uh, cash or stock option, profit sharing, gain sharing, rewards for improvement. Eh? It means any improvement activities, do you provide some incentive? So basically, do you reward for knowledge or skills? So these are, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to think about an incentive system that will motivate your staff, right? your employees. If you want to have a long-term uh, uh, employment, eh? long-time, lifelong employment, like in some companies in Japan, probably, you know, that's why they have uh, this long-term employment, because the employees will feel uh, obligated or they feel that there's part uh, of their uh, commitment to to bring up the organization eh? okay so i've already talked about uh, what basically human resource uh, uh, for operational excellence as well as job design so the most important thing to understand is that characteristics of job design skill variety variety of skills contribution, significance, feedback, autonomy. So this is, uh, you design it. You design in a way that it will actually be uh, motivating for the employees, okay? Another aspect in a job environment is uh, what we call as uh, ergonomics. Ergonomics and the work environment. So ergonomics, it's a big area of study. It's a, it is the study of the interface between man and machine. Some, come, uh, some uh, books or some other uh, literature, they call it human factors. Or they call it human factors engineering. Because we are talking about, for example, if you see here, this is a picture of, a, you know, a, can you describe this picture to me? Can you tell me what is, what, what, you, what you can understand from this, uh, this picture on the, uh, you know, what's the guy doing? Where do you think he is actually working? Any ideas? Any ideas? What was the question, Professor? The question is, look at this photo and tell me you know, what kind of situation is this worker, what, what is he doing? What is he doing? Anyone? He's carrying a big pack, package, correct? He, he brings the box to somebody. To somebody, to some, some parts, another part, okay. <coughs> and he's aided by this, uh, uh, what do you call, um, cable, eh? cable to lift him up. So you're trying to, it is a, is a um, assistant. Assisted. I mean, it's you know, rather than he has to. There's a shoes that probably it's uh, like a roller coaster. You know, it slides, slides mm -hmm. through. So he's trying to reduce the burden of the heavy box while uh -huh. transporting it from point A to point B. So this is this is an uh, you know trying to make it lighter rather than he. So the weight is transferred to the carrying mechanism. So we talk about ergonomics is... It is working like a lift actually. Correct. It's, it's, so it's, it's lifting, lifting him. 
Correct, mm. correct. So when you are lifted, you know you don't have. You are just bringing the box, okay? So of course you can think about having the box being lifted. So, so job situation. There are things in which we have to study the interface between man and environment, man and machine. Okay, there's a big area. It's called ergonomics, and uh, there are also operator input to machines, human computer interactions. You imagine the cockpit, cockpit of flying aircraft. It is designed in such a way that you try to reduce errors. Okay, so you have a lot of panels, a lot of uh, indicators. Eh? So ergonomics and the work environment in factories. There are noise. There are you know illumination. There are you know there are many things. Okay, so. Any man-machine interaction. I use a machine. A machine must be able to, you know, uh, sense and give me the correct, uh, you know, uh, feedback so that I can make the correct decision. So it feedback to operators. Uh, you know the colors, the indicators, the level in which it go up or down. You know, you switch on the tap. You know, it is uh, what. Clockwise is uh, clockwise is open. Anti-clockwise is closed. Or oh, in the other way around. So imagine the simple thing like you know, in uh, in the factory, people can make mistakes. So if you if you do not consider you know the uh, the the the, the, love, the indicators the the the, the colors. Uh, Human will make error, so it gives feedback for you to make the correct decision and uh, giving you the you know response. And you have to think about the work environment because there are illumination level, the noise, the temperature, the humidity. All these determine the not only comfort but uh, the ability of the human to do a uh, good job. Okay, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So in ergonomics, there is a recommended level of illumination for all kinds of work. All kinds of work you have, uh, you know, this is, they call it uh, lumens, if I'm not mistaken, lumens. Okay. Or lumens 500 and above, exacting tasks, electronic and watch assembly. Very bright. That's why you go to factories which are, you know, exacting Pass. installing the bearings on the watch small details 100 to 200 uh, lumens brightness okay normal classroom 75 to 100 there are lux meter lux meter to measure light lighting okay assembly tasks general interiors large warehouse you don't need lighting in warehouse you just waste your electricity so these are recommended levels of illumination in you know all conditions. Uh, so this is the you know the type of illumination overhead ceiling lights and so on. Okay. What about noise? Okay, noise level. That's why in factories you see people wearing uh, personal protective personal PPE, personal protective or PPE. They uh, which is uh, earplugs. Yeah, equipment. Okay. Why you? Why must you? At a very you know uh, pneumatic hammer. Dot, 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 dot. It's hundred decibel. If you don't wear a earplug, you may you may stand it for one year, two year. But after you reach uh, old age, you'll be deaf. You know deaf. Yeah, of course. Zua, zu, you know, Wenjia, you know, deaf. So, so that's why uh, ear protection needed if exposed to eight hours or more, eighty decibels and beyond. Eighty decibels is a subway train. Vacuum cleaner is around seventy decibels. So industry standards. So in an industry, we have to have this, uh, you know, 
protection to the workers. So if you go to a company that doesn't provide PPE, earplugs to workers, the management fail to protect worker safety. Okay, so this is, uh, and it's, it's about human performance. Eh? What else? No, okay. I thought uh, I'd share. There are many other things, okay. Uh, hang on, there's now it's a uh, illumination, noise, temperature, humidity, okay, temperature, or even chemical uh, contents in the in the, in the factory, okay, the the uh, exposure to uh, uh, dangerous materials. You you need to wear uh, gloves or sharp objects. You need to wear gloves, okay. So this is. This is part of uh, ergonomics, eh? part of ergonomics in which we try to um, protect uh, humans from the, uh, what do you call, let me just, I thought I saw in the, do you have your textbook with you? You have your textbook, right? Hmm. I thought I saw something else. Okay. So anyway, okay, this is the, okay, it's already shown this now. Eh? This is the in, uh, illumination and then this is, uh, okay, it's foot candle actually, eh? or lumen, the foot candles. Right, all this actually uh, given by OSHA. You know OSHA? Occupational Safety Health uh, Administration. OSHA. So the Occupational Safety and Health Administration requires ear protection above this level. Okay, so OSHA, uh, Malaysia, we also have our Occupational Safety and Health Act in 1994, which uh, if an employer fails to provide that, they can be charged in court, <laughs> basically. So we have a uh, law on that. Right. Um, there, there are many in, you know, engineering uh, solutions to all these and uh, so-called unsafe, not, not to say solution, but you know, you have um, sound barriers and you have uh, sound absorbing, you know, rooms if it is too noisy, okay? So these are things that must be considered when you actually uh, so-called consider ergonomics factors, eh? okay? Let me just probably can you think of one example in which you can uh, there is an ergonomic uh, environmental or in, in, not environmental but ergonomics uh, issue that you can think of Anyone? Anyone can think of uh, economic issues in any organization? Anyone? Hmm? Let's say cockpit, cockpit design. Designing human-centered cop. Can you hear? Pastor 
the voice is uh, a little low. Too low. Yes. There isn't any sound of this video. Okay. Do you see this cockpit? Can you see it? Yes. So this is this is you imagine if you know there are dials, there are indicators. For example, this indicator some some uh, some indicators go up means increase. Some indicator going down mean increase. So, so if you do not think about, you know, the error possibility of the pilot, if you don't design this, basically, if you do not think about ergonomic fixtures, you know, easy to reach, it is, you know, it's just incredible. So this is part of the, you know, uh, when I when I when you say uh, human machine interaction, human and machine, uh, so you need to design. You need to design the colors. You need to design the type of indicators, and you need, of course, to do training, like basically simulation and so on. Huh? So, so I hope you have an idea. You know, it's more than this. It's actually more than this. In fact. Um, I just, um, if I share with you another thing, uh, I'll tell you what, okay, ergonomically design uh, toothbrush. This is also, uh, you know, in terms of product design, okay, product design, images. Uh, this is ergonomic toothbrush. Why is it ergonomic? Because it will fit into our hands properly because there is, there is a, you know, there is a way in which we will hold it. So this is considered as the best position, for example, or even a lot of products you can, they, are, they claim to have uh, ergonomically designed and they they are based on uh, anthropometric. I can show you a lot of things, of anthropometric data in design, okay? So design, for example, this is, uh, this is good. Can you see this, uh, this uh, photo of, where can I go this? Uh-huh. Uh Okay, you Google, you can see this. This is the sitting position for human and work desk. So can you see this uh, viewing distance? That is 19 to 24 inch. <coughs> yeah, can you see that? It's written here. Are you seeing it? Can you see this or not? Yeah. Yes. So this is the field of going to employing anthropometry data is actually the size of human beings to fit into the work environment. If you do a job, you, you know, you, you sit for long hours. How do you feel after a few hours? Like now it's already one and a half hours. You know, you're going to be tired already. Okay. So this is ergonomically designed. You can Google. Okay. You can see it. And uh, not only that, for uh, for for car seat, for example, okay, you can, you can see all these uh, uh, you know, anthropometric data means our human body sizes. First time, right? Do you see this, Ayako? Uh, 
Have you ever been exposed and see this anthropometric data that is used for design uh, products, ergonomically designed products? No? Hmm. I'm no, I know you're not interested in this, but you know, we in engineering, uh, like we, engineering factor. Engineering, yeah, and also in psychology, psychology as well, not only engineering, uh -huh. psychology. Because I like psychology. Uh, so we have to, you have to think about the comfort and also you know the the safety, 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 and also wellness, the health of workers in the long run. Health, you know, the, your posture and so on. Okay, so come back to my slides. Any questions about this, uh, you know, economics? I'm just trying to, you know, uh, make sure that you actually have an idea of what economics uh, is about, okay? Not only this, this, this is very little. Huh? Um, okay, before we... Before we stop for today, I just like to introduce the concept of uh, method analysis. Eh? So we have about 10 minutes, 20 minutes, <coughs> 15 minutes. So the next topic that you need to understand in job design is um, what we call as work study or methods analysis. Methods analysis. So methods analysis is um, trying to find out you know how best to do a job how best to you know manual normally we, because we started in manual industrial revolution started in you know, 1.0 is actually you know manual working so it focus on how task is performed <coughs> so how are you going to assemble you know uh, you know uh, activities uh, how to assemble these components so you need, you need to to focus to analyze that so you focus on how task is performed and it is used to analyze so methods analysis is used to analyze uh, the movement of individuals or materials so when you try to analyze movement of individuals or materials, we can use a flow diagram or a process charts. So a flow diagram will show where materials are actually flowing. Huh? Or we can use uh, activity charts to analyze activities of human and machine and the crew activity. Okay, remember when... Uh, when uh, remember the the, the this uh, NASCAR team, yeah. This is an activity chart, <coughs> <coughs> meaning that at certain point in time, what is where is your location and what you are doing. Okay, so this is a kind of activity chart, and who. Who is doing what and at which location? Top view, eh? this is car, this is CRT. Okay, this is kind of activity chart. Activity chart. Eh? So we have uh, this uh, tools for us to do to analyze activities of human and machine, activity charts, to analyze body movement hands or even um, especially hand working eh? so we have operation charts so all these are actually tools for us to uh, visualize how work are being done okay how things are being processed for example from the material from the press machine it will flow here go to the machine one and the worker will do this. So this is a flow diagram, right? So initially we try to visualize how, how the job is being done. 
um, because we're trying to analyze job, so we want to know the all the workers' jobs. So we haven't go to the individual. Okay, this is this overall. Okay, overall. And you can see if you want to if you can do. Okay, this is actually doing improvement. After improvement, this is the new flow. After some changes, after some you know. So this is a new flow, which is a which is obviously better flow. You can see the flow before, before, after. So what's your opinion? Before and after. Any you know, any uh, changes, any improvement? Nian. Can, sorry, can I say you again? The first. Before, uh, but, uh, yeah. This is the first uh, flow, flow, first flow, first before improvement, and uh, this is after improvement. The process is short, shorter, shorter than yeah than before. Than before, it is much smoother than before. Okay, uh, yeah. and you can actually calculate the distance travel between before and after. So a good way of analyzing a job is to look at the current flow. Is there any bottlenecks? You know bottlenecks? Have you heard of bottlenecks? Yes. Yes. Bottlenecks are places in which stuck. All right. Yeah. You go to highway or road, there is a bottleneck. So we try to remove the bottleneck. Yeah? So four diagram is trying to analyze. And then we can use a process chart. So a process chart, you can do a process chart for any kind of process. Try to do a process chart for uh, okay, this is your exercise for today. I want you to construct something like this, process chart for, construct process chart for uh, shelving products in supermarket. Start from, start from, take product from store, okay, until, until you finish it now, you stack on shelf, you understand? Stack on shelf, shelf, for example, you go to Family Mart, Family Mart toka, 7-Eleven toka. Okay, so construct the process chart for shelving products in supermarket. So I from where? You, from take? Take product from store. Okay. From storage area, from store. Oh. And then, you know, move or whatever, take trolley. Try to be a bit more, de try to be detailed. Okay. Uh, so this is, this is like uh, documenting the current uh, process chart, the current steps. And normally in a process chart, there'll be symbols. O is for operation. Arrow is for... Rio, what is arrow? Transportation, transport. Uh, transport means transport. what? What transport? Transport means to move. Take something, move. Take move. something. Yeah. Move from one part. From to here to there. Yes, from A to B. Inspection. Inspect means. Good. So you Test. cannot. You cannot just take, take and. Maybe you want to do inspection. Then you step. Okay. Delay, delay is something like waiting or 
you know um, stuck cannot do any work so delay is a stop in the operation or in, in the steps okay and storage storage is uh, you know from storage for example you can start from storage because storeroom is a storage correct can start from storage so this is before you can you can produce after that means it is shown here present method and proposed method so before you come up with a proposed method you must document the present method so you must have two charts one is the present method and one is the improved method if you have an improved method you don't i mean at least at least one chart <laughs> If you have two charts, then you have you are doing some improvements. But anyway, I just want to see at least one chart now, basically. Okay, so I think that's a probably a good exercise for you to you know think about when you talk about method analysis eh? as a start, eh? as a start. And the rest is actually activity chart. You know, this is for worker A, worker B, operator A, operator B. This is all change and fluid check in a Mechanic shop. Mechanic shop. This is time. This is time. So this is what operator B A what uh, do. Uh, this is what operator to do. Okay. It's called activity chart. The other one is operation chart. Operation chart is much more detailed because it's talking about hands. <coughs> Reach. Cat the boat. So it is a table work. It is not for you no know, big work going from one point to another point this is for operation chart on the workbench so reach for parts assemble washer okay this is operation chart two-handed two-handed operation eh? yeah. so that is uh, all that i probably want to cover for today which is actually this mainly this uh, you know this method analysis is uh, focusing on how task is performed one or at a, a big scale okay from one point to another point the layout you know, and then secondly the uh, the body movements which is actually you know I'm, I'm not asking you to do the operation chart I'm, I'm just asking you to do the process chart eh? okay right so any questions uh, for you I will I will type it out uh, what you can do again for that uh, for that exercise eh? so that you can be clear about it <laughs> not uh, you won't be clear about it eh? so at least some activities for you to think about uh, this week and next week uh, we will try to complete the work measurement measurement standard time and so on okay okay any questions uh, that you may want to you know that you have any questions? No? no please, please read the book. Eh? Please read the book. The book is, uh, is important for you to have, uh, you know, uh, if you can read the book before the lecture, that will be probably better. Read next, for next week, please read on the time calculation. Time calculation for this. Uh, please, uh, please go through this section on... Uh, uh, this section on do you have the book do you have the book yes yes okay so i want you to read this uh, especially this is this book uh, professor the previous one yeah the last no. semester i guess i gave you last uh, semester yeah, okay, that one. time studies okay so i want I you have... to look at this time studies okay this uh, how do you calculate so that next week we can become it will be easier for me to explain uh, you have some ideas and uh, we'll do some yes, chapter 8 chapter 10 10 chapter 10. 10 10 it looks like a little difficult difficult but you have to read it okay this book you have to read this huh? yeah. okay yes. right okay so i'll see you next week god willing huh? Jacob, okay, and the rest of you. Thank right. you very much. Anything Thank can uh, message me, uh, WhatsApp me. Okay. okay. Bye.
Okay, see you, Mata. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mata Raisha. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.